Welcome back to the shop. If you're new to the channel, this is Ray's Garage and I'm Ray Cornelia. So I'm repairing slash restoring another Wilton 4 inch vise. And of course, the original factory handle was completely destroyed. So I got some 1144 stress proof. Uh, this is 5 eighths. Made a new handle, cut down the shoulders to half inch. And the way uh, Wilton originally did this is they cut down the shoulders and they made a ball ball slips over here you heat up the end peen it over and then sand it smooth so i was going to duplicate that process but i had no way to make balls or radius cuts so i came up with a quick inexpensive process of doing this and i wanted to share it with you so let me bring you in and show you what i got i'll tell you right up front i went to youtube and watched a whole bunch of videos on ball end and radius cutters so I expanded on a bunch of information I got from different folks, contraptions and designs to way to make radius cuts and balls. So the cheapest, quickest way I found is the boring head method. And the reason I say this is very inexpensive is because as you can see, there's Chineseium written all over this stuff. It tastes like it, it smells like it, but you know what? It works. I went to CDCO, Machinery Corporation. I bought a two inch boring head. It was about $48. I bought a three quarter inch straight shaft. This is an inch and a half, 18 threads. Boring bar holder, which is three quarter with the sleeve in it and one inch with the sleeve out of it. And then I made this in my shop to hold it all together so let me show you how it works when i finally put this together i'll grease everything but i just wanted to show you for demonstration purposes the straight shank basically just goes right into into there your boring head screws onto the arbor okay this was already threaded to 3816 so I made this to where it holds everything nice and snug. As you can see, it's got a couple shoulders cut into it and then a relief for the, the button head screw. So that goes on there. This gets tightened up. And then voila, I have a radius cutter. The way I turn the radiuses once this is all assembled I threw this little handle with an Allen key in it and basically this is my handle. I did not want a permanent handle on this. I wanted something I could take off and move around. So that's why I got this in here. So that's how I actually swing the radius. So let me talk about some different cutters we can use in here. I experimented with a few different ones and I'll show you what I got. A fly cutter. This is a three quarter inch fly cutter with high speed steel quarter inch shank. This is 4140 with a piece of quarter inch high speed steel um, ground to an angle. And this is a press fit. I basically drilled it um, tooth out under, heated up, and did a shrink fit. And then I test it with a boring bar too and what I did is um, I ground the tip here because the way you're going to be cutting your radius this is this is going to be in the tool like this and you're going to be swinging like that cutting your radius so I ground it to where this is the cutting surface right here this front point okay so um, that's pretty much all the pieces I spent probably here I got the receipt right here I'll tell you exactly what everything was uh, the the boring bar holder was $29 the two inch boring head was $48 the straight shank was $15 uh, the rest of it I had in my shop that I used and also too, here's something that I really liked and, and another reason why I went for it is CDCO also has a three inch boring head that fits the same shank. 
So down the road, if I want to swing some bigger radiuses, I can just buy the boring head, the three inch boring head, screw it right on here, and the whole setup still works the same exact way. Another nice thing about the boring bar holder is that you could set the drag right here. Uh, this is what locks in your boring bar. So you can uh, adjust these screws to where you get the right amount of drag to where this just isn't uh, free spinning. So I made one more modification I'd like to show you. Basically what I did is I took out the adjusting screw and I drilled and tapped a 1032 uh, button cap and that way it allows me to make adjustments from this side and you'll see once it's in the lathe uh, why I did this. Uh, this is Loctited in and of course uh, you all know that you could adjust your drag of your boring head through these two outside screws. Uh, your middle screw you're supposed to Loctite in and, and set your drag that way and these outer ones lock it. So right there we have some pretty good drag here. Um, once I get it on the tool post, I can play with uh, these adjustments a little bit and either add or take away some drag. So again, uh, here it is all together, all greased. I have anti-seize in this connection and I have anti-seize on this stainless bolt going into the three quarter inch arbor. And then, <clears throat> and then here's my handle. And then there's your sweep. I have the radius cutter set up in the tool post as though you would be using it. I have a straight high speed steel uh, quarter inch cutting tool in here. And I just want to demonstrate the amount of radius you can get in this two inch boring head. It's at its extreme. It's all the way out. And if we sweep around, you see we can get about a two and three quarter inch ball out of this or radius. Now you could actually get more out of a two inch tool if you offset your tool a little bit more because then that'll give you a bigger sweep. But anyway, uh, just wanted to demonstrate that. And of course, um, as you come in, Let's go a half inch in, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, there's about a half inch right there. So we're gonna sweep. And as you can see, the size of our ball and radius reduces. Um, I know many of you already know this. I just wanted to demonstrate this, just to show the size of ball and the size of radius you can get out of this tool. So. Let's go no adjustment, just with the tool on the outside in, in this spot here. So we're about three, three and a quarter, roughly. Okay, so we're gonna do about a one inch radius with it like this. Setup's pretty easy. Just lock your um, tool block and your tool post holder. And let me bring you in on here. It's important that you get uh, center and center. So adjust your height so you're at center cutting point here. And then adjust your cross slide so you're at center. And then uh, don't move the carriage or the cross slide because what you're going to do is you're going to back your carriage up against the part right here. Uh, that's going to be your zero. Lock your carriage. And then the way you're going to be able to make your sweep is to back off on the tool. So you can see with the tool in this position, I can't get to the adjuster over here. And this is why I have this one on this side. So with my zeros all set, I can back the tool off and you wanna back it off enough where you're gonna just barely clear right here. 
You see right there it's clearing, so we're going to start adjusting in until we start making cuts. For this demonstration, I'm going to do just a, um, just a rounded end here. Uh, to do a complete ball, you have to have a relief back in here, and I can set that up after this one. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and make some cuts. <laughs> Nice rounded end right there. So I have a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half uh, aluminum stock in here with a shoulder cut down. And I have to have a cut down shoulder to get the tool around. Uh, I can't make a perfect ball on this side because I have a little bit of shoulder left, but I, I wanted some rigidity. But you'll get the idea of how it's going to form a ball. So basically, I set up center on center again, uh, lock the uh, cross slide and the carriage, and I have the same distance from this shoulder to this shoulder. And again, it's one and a half by one and a half. So let's start making a ball. So you get the general idea of how the tool works, um, making radius ends. Uh, next, I'm gonna try and mess with it a little bit and see if I can do some inside dishing with it as well. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you found it interesting and learned something from it. 
Um, I know I did. So anyway, until next time, see ya.